Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at how you can use the environment with the Dolby Atmos Panner, the 3D object panner. This is all part of the new 10.7 and uh, as soon as this came out, of course, I was thinking, how could I creatively do some panning in here in ways that we might not be able to easily do with automation or any of the other tools? There's a couple factors that have changed with this and so uh, I definitely want to look at how I did this, but I want to hear how you would have done it because certainly this is not the only way. Logic is a, a piece of software with many roads to many de destinations. And so I'm curious to see how you would have done this. Uh, for me, this particular signal flow of our MIDI is really comes naturally because I've been doing it for a long time, but it certainly doesn't come naturally for everybody and uh, it can be quite difficult. So my goal was I want the piano sound here to move a little bit over here in the corner of our Atmos. Uh, and the reason for that is because anytime you're doing spatial audio, uh, if the head tracking is engaged, then you can leave things more stationary because then the motion and being able to hear the differences come from the head movement. But sometimes, especially when we're doing binaural uh, and um, spatial audio right now without everyone having access to all of it uh, the motion the head tracking uh, we sometimes want to add a little movement into it so people can hear where it's coming from and localize even if they're not able to to you know move their head and hear the differences so it's a technique that i sometimes use for some of the background instruments just to give them a teeny bit of motion and i like being able to do that without having to do automation because if, what if i want to change it really easily there's a lot of factors here so that being said what i have is uh, a modulator right here and this is the LFO that is making this motion. It's going up and down at a diagonal. Sure, this seems relatively straightforward, simple movement, but it is actually not that easy to do. Number one, the modulator MIDI effects, you can't use it to control panning. It doesn't go that far down in the channel strip. You can just use it to control plugins, uh, but not the actual panning. So that's the first hurdle. And, um, Second hurdle is if you want to do this with audio track, you can't use a modulator at all in its native state. Now, there are some other solutions that people keep on saying to me. They say, you know, just use a side chain or, you know, bring the audio file through a tunnel into a MIDI or instrument track, and then you can use the, uh, the effects. But this doesn't still control the panner. So there's no way, like, say I come down here to learn MIDI, uh, or learn plug-in parameter and move the panner. It doesn't do that. And um, the actual panner can be controlled via MIDI. It just doesn't go through that particular signal chain. And so what I had to do is come over. I'm going to pull down the environment that I have on my other monitor. And for instance, uh, let's come out here to one of our channels. Uh, the very first step I had to do was put a monitor here and attach that there. And then I moved around the panner. In this case, it was the 3D object panner. Um, and then I learned it was F1, and then down here for the ear level and location, it was 18 and 16 with uh, the, the actual data there. And so I knew by doing that, and this says 25 and 26 because it's the, the 7.2.4 or whatever, 7.1.2 uh, panner. So that one is not the one that I actually ended up using. This is just an example. So I went over into my clicks and ports and I attached from the IAC driver bus one uh, into a monitor so I could see it. And this is information coming from that plugin. So the way I got this to the IAC, let's close that for a second on this empty dummy instrument track here i put an external instrument and i chose as the output iac driver bus one and then midi channel one and this becomes more important because now we have the ability to choose between midi channels and actual you know destination sources 
So you want to make sure you do assign that and know what you're assigning it to. So I did that, sent out this instrument channel out there with the modulator on that channel. Inside the environment then, I pulled off IAC driver bus one, it's right below the summing on our physical inputs, pulled that to the monitor. The first one I put into transformer number one, I said uh, status equals control. That's the control data from the uh, modulator plugin. Data byte 18, this is really arbitrary, doesn't really matter too much, uh, except that I do want it to go to be 18 later, because uh, that's what we're using down here. The biggest change though was that I'm fixing it. So I'm taking whatever status I set up here equals the control, the continuous controller, and I'm fixing that to be fader instead of the control data. So I'm converting it from control to fader data, leaving it on 18, and then it goes out and that did the vertical movement. So then the horizontal one, I pull the second feed off of the monitor into a transformer. I did the same thing, status equals, anything that was a control data, I fixed it into fader data. Um, and we could actually get more specific if we wanted to, but it just, I just took all the channels for that. And then for the data byte one, I wanted to convert it from 18 to 16 because that's the one that was giving us the horizontal movement. And then I wanted to reverse it because if you just let it go through, it goes the other direction and I wanted it to actually be, uh, I wanted it to actually stay in that one corner. So I reversed the data using the transformer. Oh man, so a lot of little pieces there for some of you thinking, wow, this is so not worth it. Um, but the setup is not too bad. The last thing was taking these transformers and pulling them directly into the track. Um, so I've just instigated a, an instrument over here. This is uh, the Rhodes, the piano one. And I just put the output of those directly into this track. There's two things about this. One of them, that means it will always control that instrument. You'll hear the sound of it, the, the fader moving. Um, but two, because I went directly to the track, it won't be recorded into the actual MIDI data out in the main window. So if I wanted to record this, I'd have to do it a different way. But since I'm just going directly to this track, you'll hear the effect. The effect will get bounced, um, but it won't actually uh, be written into the MIDI data itself. I suspect... Um, and some of you will probably correct me if I'm wrong. I suspect that means we might have to do a real-time bounce instead of an, an offline bounce. Um, but I'm not positive about that. Just because this isn't coming from data in the actual track. It's just a, a real-time flyby. So I would have to test that out. I actually don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. But... All of that means now that I, I've got this. So we could have come through, I could come through with this, our um, main controls and do object position left and right, back and front elevation and actually write automation. That would be in some ways, many ways, a lot easier. Uh, this takes a little bit more time to set up, but the benefit of this uh, comes from the fact that with the modulator now, I can say, you know what? I don't. I want this to be you know, on the half notes, or I want this to be on quarter notes. And I want this to be a little bit more, or I want this to be just, you know, a teeny little bit, and we'll do an offset over here to the exact position I want it. So I get all these parameters that I can use and make differences with this, and it's a, a lot easier to do in many ways. Uh, on top of that, I can come through now really easily, add a second modulator. So let's open up the first one that I had already. And um, I want to use something like a randomizer mod wheel. We're gonna learn plugin parameter and choose the rate here. So now I can have it changing over time. So sometimes it's gonna be fast and do like little wiggles and sometimes it's gonna be slow. But now the one modulator is controlling the other modulator and good luck doing automation like that on the actual tracks. I mean, there's just no other way around it. Okay, so 
punch some holes in this for me. The, the biggest issue being that the panners, you can't control directly from MIDI effects on the channel itself. That's just a weakness. I haven't found a way um, with any of the default built-in tools to do this. Um, for instance, I, I was hopeful that we could use the modifier and convert control data over into the, uh, the fader data, but um, I, I, there's no, no options for that here. So that leads us back into uh, the actual environment to make that conversion. There was another one I was hopeful about, and that's the scripter. I'm sure that there's a way to program it to do this, um, but I haven't found one that's built in already. So for instance, MIDI to plugin parameters doesn't have um, those fader events. So we can't do it with that one. And I don't see, let me just do event gate. Yeah, I mean, I'm not looking through all of them obviously, but certainly I got to imagine that there's a way to do this. I just don't know what it is. And this is a, a default, one of the learning versions. So if you know of one of these that does that, let me know, because it would be a little bit easier for sure to use this, or even you know, if you have a third party one that you can download. But you get the idea. This is something that is useful to know just because um, running this with a, uh, the Atmos can be very, very helpful to create motion and things. Uh, and so I think it's worth being aware of and how to do it. Okay, that's it for this. I'm excited to have a bunch of you saying, no, you're an idiot. This is a better way to do it. Um, because far be it from me. It's like, I, I do know these things, but every once in a while, it's like, I, I don't use a couple of the other methods. And then uh, we lose track of them. So please, 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 in the comments, write stuff, and uh, we'll see what you find.